You read the title of this video, and I'm going to make the argument that many progressives on the left are indeed guilty of political treason. Let me explain. Let's start with an example, a belief system, Catholicism. And say you're a good Catholic, you go to church virtually every Sunday. You go religiously, excuse the pun. And when you're there at the mass you go to, you always see the same guy, a couple pews away, same spot every week, week in, week out. One day, one Sunday, you're by yourself. Usually you're with somebody else. And you go to the back of the church. They have a little community thing after mass and they have coffee and donuts. And you go in there to grab a cup of coffee, maybe a donut. And you see this guy sitting all alone at a table by himself having a cup of coffee. And everybody else is with friends or family or whatever. And you're by yourself too. So you figure, oh, I see him every week. Why don't I go talk to him? So you go over and you ask him if you can join him. He says, sure. You sit down and you start having a discussion. The discussion turns to Catholicism at some point. And after a while, you begin to think, this guy, you know, he's not really good Catholic. And you say something along those lines, and he slams his fist on the table and says, you know, don't you dare question my commitment to Catholicism. But you continue to have a discussion and you ask him some questions. You know, do you believe that the, the Virgin Mary uh, was assumed into heaven at a certain point? instead of dying and getting buried. And he says, no. Do you believe in the virgin birth? He says, no. Do you believe that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven 40 days after the resurrection? He says, no. Do you believe in the resurrection, that three days after he was crucified, he arose from the dead? The guy says, no. Do you believe uh, in transubstantiation? That's the part in the Catholic Mass when the priest raises the host and the, 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 the host, the, the bread and the wine, in a sense, become literally the body and blood of Christ. Do you believe in transubstantiation? He says, no. Do you believe that the Gospels, the four Gospels in the New Testament, well, written by men, but were inspired by God? No. Okay. Do you believe Jesus performed any of the miracles that the New Testament say he performed? He says, no, no way. Do you believe Jesus Christ was the son of God? No. Do you believe in God? No. I'm an atheist. Now, at this point, you're thinking, you know, I went 12 years in Catholic school, four in a school that was a seminary. I wasn't a seminarian. I was just a day student. But I know what this guy is. It's a word for him. It's called heretic. If he professes to believe a believing Catholic, be a believing Catholic, practicing Catholic, and he doesn't believe any of these things, he's a heretic. He's guilty of heresy. It's that plain. It's that simple. He is guilty of heresy. Second example of a belief system in action. Let's assume, in this case, that you're a Muslim. And every week, or almost every week, you go to the mosque on the Sabbath for services. And you always see another guy there, a couple rugs down, you know, praying, 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 doing all the things he's supposed to do, saying all the things he's supposed to say. And usually you go home right after services, but for this first week, you decide not to. And you go to as a social room for the men, there's another one for the women. And you go to the one for the men. And sure enough, you see this guy at a table all by himself having a cup of coffee. So you go over, you ask if you can join him. He says, sure. So you sit down, you start talking about Islam. And at some point, you know, you start getting this idea, this guy's not a good Muslim. And you say something to that end, and he slams the system at the table and he says, don't you dare question my commitment to Islam. So you start asking him a couple of questions. You know, do you believe that Muhammad rode a, a magical horse thing and went from Mecca to Jerusalem and up 
to the heavens, met with all the prophets, met with God, did this several times, arguing with Allah to reduce the number of daily prayers from 50 to 5. Do you believe that? He says, no. No. Do you believe that the Quran, the Holy Quran, is infinite, that it's always existed? It existed long before Muhammad. It just happened to be dictated to him in the 7th century. He says, no, don't believe it at all. He said, do you believe that the Quran is the literal word of God dictated to the prophet Muhammad by Gabriel? No, I don't believe that. Okay. Do you believe that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah? No, I don't believe that. Do you believe that Allah is the one true God? No, I don't believe that. Do you believe in God in any sense of the word? No, I'm an atheist. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, why the hell is this guy in the mosque every week? Why is he here? Does he just like coming and praying and hanging out with people? He doesn't even hang out with people at the end. He just sits by himself. And then, you know, you realize there's a word for a guy like this who claims to be a Muslim but doesn't believe any of these things. He's an apostate. He's guilty of apostasy. Just as the Catholic was a heretic guilty of heresy, this Muslim guy is a, an apostate and he's guilty of apostasy. He's here, but he doesn't belong. He doesn't believe. That's what apostasy is all about. Now you're yourself. One day it's a bright sunny day, you go get a cup of coffee, you start wandering around the streets, you head to a coffee shop. Go in, you get your cup of something. Maybe it's a Starbucks or you get your, you know, whatever you drink. And there's like not a lot of space, but there's one table. There's only one guy. There's, a, there's another chair there. And you go over and you ask if you can join him at his table. He says, sure, sit down. So you sit down, you start having a chat and you start talking about politics. And along the way, you start getting this feel that, I don't know, this guy's an American, born here. A citizen, uh, you know, you start wondering about his extent to which he's a real American. And at some point you say something along those lines and he slams his fist on the table and he points his finger at you and he says, don't you dare question my patriotism. Don't you dare. So you back off and then you start asking some questions, you know, to, do you believe that the, the founding of America was a major historical event? Said, no, it was nothing. It was garbage. Do you believe that the founders were great men? You know, Washington and Jefferson and Hamilton and Madison and Adams and some of the others? Said, no, they're all just a bunch of, uh, of white and misogynistic supporters of the patriarchy and, and slavery and racism. Okay. What about our founding documents? You know, the Declaration of Independence and then, then the, the Constitution of the United States, which we live under today. What do you feel about them? He said, oh, it's junk. They're just outlines to secure the patriarchy and a racist society. They're disgusting. Okay. Do you believe in a Republican form of government? Small r Republican form of government. You know, separation of powers, executive, legislative, judicial, checks and balances. Some parts democratic, some parts not. Now, that's garbage. I don't believe any of that. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, why is this guy here? Why does he profess to be an American when he doesn't believe anything that Americans are supposed to believe? And remember, like Islam, like Catholicism or Christianity in general, an Amer Americanism is a belief structure. It's a belief system. You're not an American because you're white. When, when you take that oath to become a citizen, if you come from abroad, from a foreign country, 
It doesn't say, you know, you take the oath to become white, to become Christian. No, it says you have to uh, defend, adhere to, support the Constitution of the United States. You don't have to be a specific religion or race or ethnicity or anything to become an American. You just have to become you just have to be a human being. That's all it takes. And you adhere to these ideas. The same is true of Islam and the same is true of Christianity. All three are belief systems. You believe the key tenets of that belief system. Now, if you don't believe it and you're a Catholic, you're a heretic. You're guilty of heresy. If you don't believe it and you're a Muslim, you're an apostate. You're guilty of apostasy. If you don't believe it as an American, are you not guilty of being a traitor and political treason? Treason in a political sense. I'm not talking about trying to overthrow the government. Are you not a political traitor? Are you not guilty of political treason if you don't believe any of the things involved in what makes someone American? I would argue that you are. Now, we all know people like this. Some of them are friends. Some are members of our family. We see them on TV. We read about them in the press. We know that some of them, I don't need to mention any names, are in the Congress of the United States. They're sitting up there. They're there. They claim to be our representatives, but they don't believe the things. It would be as if you went to a Catholic church and a week after you'd had this discussion with this guy who you determined was a heretic, was put in charge by the parish, parish priests in charge of Sunday school to teach the kids who come in on Sundays who don't go to Catholic school and go to the public schools to learn about Catholicism. You would think, what, are they crazy? Or they made this heretic treasurer for the parish. Are they nuts? Or if, if you go to the mosque and you're a Muslim and they take this guy who's clearly an apostate and they put him in charge of educating the children in Islam, what would you think? What are they, crazy? Am I living in an insane world? But that's, we are living in an insane world. That's what's happening in the United States. People who don't believe in the ideas that make one American are being placed in positions of power in this country. Again, I don't need to mention their names. We know who they are. They are political traitors. They are guilty of political treason. It's that simple. So what do you think? Let me know in a comment. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you liked the video, you agreed with me, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with like-minded people. Share it with your friends, hopefully. Most of them are think like you. Uh, if they don't, send it to them anyway. See what they have to say. And in the meantime, as we confront the resistance, always remember what you need to do is to stand tall, stand firm, and keep fighting.